Please pray with me. May these words that I speak be grounded in my soul, encouraged by the God presence in me. And may these words that you hear be captured by your soul, enlivened by the God presence in you. Amen. The title of my reflection this morning is The Way to Pray. This parable that we have just heard, read, is really not about the way to pray, uh, nor for that matter is my reflection this morning. It's not that I picked the wrong title, but I don't think it's about what you may think prayer might be. This parable, however, for me, is about the way to live. And to that extent, it is about living in a way that your life, my life, our lives, become living prayer. The Jewish religion in Jesus' time, whether by intention or not, was for the most part about checking boxes, having a list and checking things off. So, I fast regularly, check. I pray well and publicly, check. I say the right things, check. I hang with the right people. Well, they wouldn't have said that 2,000 years ago. But you know what I mean. I hang with the right people, check. I give 10% of my earnings to the synagogue, check. I worship every week, check. And if you messed up in any way, you offered a sacrifice and got back on track. Check. The problem is that none of this really touched the soul, let alone grew the soul, the God presence within us. Religious commitment became the same as cultural practice to achieve success, to improve position, and, of course, to avoid shame. It was about ego and human self-interest. Christian mainstream religion has been about much of the same, except that we have eliminated the harder things like the fasting and uh, giving 10% to the church. But we continue to pray publicly, check. We go to church regularly, check. We hang with the right people, check. We give something in money and time, check. And we believe the right things, check. And when we mess up, well, we don't do sacrifice. We just believe more, check. According to this parable, Jesus wasn't impressed with ticking boxes. And I suspect he wouldn't be impressed today either. In the parable, the Pharisee represents this way of living that involves ticking boxes. Jesus is saying that doing the right things may be fine, but it doesn't open us to a deeper experience of God. The tax collector on the other hand, the tax collector who was right at the bottom of the social order. You couldn't, unless you were a shepherd, you couldn't get any lower. And it's the tax collector that, for Jesus, represents the way into a deeper experience of God. It is about shedding our ego and all of the things that stroke our ego and surrendering into our real self, our God self, beneath all of our masks and aside from all of the illusions that we hold to be true. Richard Rohr says, Jesus clearly taught the disciples about surrender, humility, servant leadership, and nonviolence. They resisted him every time. And so he finally had to make the journey himself and tell them, Follow me. 
follow me. Rohr goes on to say, but Christians have preferred to hear something Jesus never said. Worship me. Worship of Jesus is rather harmless and risk-free. Following Jesus, really following Jesus, changes everything. Our church, our religion, is failing in part because we have centered our faith around ticking boxes rather than fully opening our hearts and our minds and our bodies, our all, to the deep presence of God, the deep presence of love, the deep presence of spirit in all of life. The mystics throughout the last two millennia have known this. Meister Eckhart, a 13th century mystic, said this, spiritual life has more to do with subtraction than with addition. But in the capitalist West, we keep trying to climb higher up the ladder of spiritual success. We've turned the gospel into a matter of addition rather than subtraction. We think we need to believe more and more, and we need to do more and more. And so Rohr adds, when we are so full of ourselves, we have no room, no room for God, for others, or otherness in general. Carl Jung, who was a philosopher and a contemporary of, of uh, Sigmund Freud, was asked late in his life by a student what his pilgrimage of life um, uh, had, had really been, and, and he responded this way, in my case, it has been having to climb down a thousand ladders until I could reach out my hand to the little clod of earth that I am. It seems to me that's what it is to be free. We aren't really free until we're free of our egos, free of our concern about reputation, free of our self-image, free of our need to be right, free of our need to be successful, free of our need to be in control, free of our need to be loved by others and even to think of ourselves as loving. It is coming to the tax collector's deep truth. Oh God, have compassion on me, this little clod of earth. Be compassion in me, this little clod of earth. It is only by going down to the essence of who I am that I can find contentment, free of all of the shits, where only love is left. Once again, I uh, refer to Richard Rohr, and I'm not even going to apologize for quoting him so often because he's got something going, folks. And he says, being human means acknowledging that we're made from the earth and will return to the earth. For a few years, we dance around on the stage of life and have the chance to reflect a little bit of God's glory. I love that. We are earth that has come to consciousness. If we discover this power in ourselves and know that we are God's creatures, that we come from God or love or spirit, whatever you want to call it, and that we return to God or love or spirit, that's enough. This is what it is to follow Jesus, to strip away and to strip away until we face our own naked soul. God-shaped, and dance our life just like Jesus did when he said, follow me, follow me. Roar continues, and this part is hard to he hear. It's hard for me to hear, but I think it's true. He says, I have often thought that 
this non-preaching of the gospel was like a secret social contract between clergy and laity as we shake hands across the sanctuary. We, ag we agree not to tell you anything uncomfortable, and you keep coming to our services. It is a nice deal, but because once the gospel is preached, I doubt if the churches would be full. Rather, we might be out in the streets living the message. The discernment and call to a life of service, to a love-centered life, to a life that gives itself away instead of protecting and procuring in the name of Jesus is what the church should be about. And so, real life, authentic life, real authentic spiritual life is not about ticking boxes. It is about risking it all for love. It's not about worshiping Jesus. It is about following Jesus. It's not about sustaining an institution. It is about creating community committed, deeply committed to a love that supports and challenges us both individually and collectively to affirm without falter the words and the way of Jesus to follow me. And this, my friends, I think is the way to pray. Amen. Amen.